Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Barclays Center. Our press conference is advancing the 2016 NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship first round here in Brooklyn, New York. <clears throat> we'll be joined in just a moment by student athletes from West Virginia University, Jay Sean Page, Devin Williams, and Jonathan Holton. When the student athletes arrive in the interview area, the locker room will be open. All the student athletes that will not join us in the interview room are available for interviews in the locker room. That's a 30 minute interview session after 15 minutes in here with the West Virginia Mountaineers student athletes head coach Bob Huggins will join us right here in the main interview area just a reminder to please silence your cell phone when conducting activities here in the interview room a reminder to please refrain from the use of flash photography no video recording devices are permitted to be used in this room that includes camera phones uh, we have the satellite information for you if you need it. Stop by and see the great folks from Hammond Communications in the back of the room or come and visit me during a break. Uh, we have microphone stewards in attendance. Patrick is here as well as Erica. If you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll bring the microphone in your direction. We have pool reporters, but they're currently not present. We'll, enter, we'll uh, introduce them when they are. Ladies and gentlemen, we're joined now by student athletes from West Virginia University, Jay Sean Page, Devin Williams, and Jonathan Holton. Their teammates are in the locker room for the next 30 minutes for interviews as well. They're not joining us here. Coach Huggins will be here in 15 minutes, but right now we're looking for the first question for the student athletes, Jay Sean, Devin, and Jonathan. If you have a question, raise your hand. Microphone attendants will make their way in your direction. Please state your name and media outlet before you begin your question. First question for the student athletes from West Virginia. We have one on the right side for Mitch. Jay Sean, I was just wondering, I know this is kind of your territory around here. Can you talk about what it means to be playing here in this area? Um, you know, my second time playing here, you know, it means a lot, you know, um, you know, just seeing hard work pay off and, you know, getting to play in front of my family and friends, you know, just speaks for itself. Continuing with questions for the Mountaineer student athletes, if you have one, just raise your hand. Any questions for West Virginia at this time? We have one in the back on the right side. Greg Hunter, Metro News. Devin, to start with you, and I guess it'll be for all of you guys. Just give us your scouting report on Stephen F. Austin. What do you see out of them? What causes problems? What do you have to do well? Actually, we're going to start with Jay Sean, and then Devin, then Jonathan for that one, if that's okay. Um, you know, just a well-coached group. You know, um, they pass the ball well, you know, run good offense. So, you know, we just got to be aware and, you know, just do what we do. Devin. Um, same thing, uh, well-coached group. Uh, a group that shouldn't be taken lightly. Uh, but for the most part, you know, if we go out there and just do what we're supposed to do and uh, follow the game plan, we should be okay. Jonathan. Uh, <laughs> well, coach group, just like they said, and uh, we got to like run them off the like three point line. Got to uh, not like turn the ball over and just like, uh, like put like zest the light ball. Like that. Next question's on the right toward the back, Roger. Roger Rubin from Newsday. Uh, for a couple of you guys, whoever Mark picks, you guys are really known for your defense. How hard was it for you guys to learn that defense and, and how long did it take to get it to where it is right now so effective? How about Devin and Jonathan? Um, Jay Sean, you wanna take that also? Okay, we'll start with Jay Sean. Um, you know, the style of defense we play, you know, conditioning is a big part of it. And, um, you know, we start in the off season, you know, we're conditioning, you know, getting in shape, you know, to play the style of play we do. So, you know, that's the main part of it. And then, you know, just, you know, first day on campus, you know, we just learn, you know, small principles and, you know, it just builds up. Deb. Um, I think the most important part is just buying in 
You know, you kind of got to buy in and, uh, you know, we kind of got a taste of it last year of uh, how, you know, critical it can be, how, you know, crucial it could be when other teams have to face us. And, uh, you know, we kind of made uh, some history last year. So it just gave us a little bit more to look forward to. So, you know, um, just everybody's being uh, enthusiastic about it. So it's just making it um, easier for everybody, you know, go out there and just um, cause mayhem. Jonathan. Everyone bought in and uh, everyone was play hard. And uh, I say by that, tell you the truth. Next question for the Mountaineer student athletes, if there are any. If you have a question, raise your hand. Microphone attendant will meet you. Okay, if there's no further questions, we'd like to thank Jay, Sean, Devin, and Jonathan for joining us down here in the main interview room. They're going to rejoin their teammates in the locker room, which is open until 4.15. Coach Huggins is scheduled to join us in about 10 minutes. We'll start the uh, interview process with Coach Huggins in just a moment.
We're joined now by West Virginia head coach Bob Huggins. We'll take the first question for Coach Huggins whenever there is one. There's one in the back toward the center. Go ahead, Larry, with your name and media Hi, Coach, outlet. Uh, Larry Fleischer, Associated Press. Some of the players were, talk, were up here talking about buying into the defensive system. From your perspective, what was that like, getting them to buy in like pretty early in the season? It really wasn't that hard. Um, I kind of asked them if they all wanted to play, and they all said they did. And I said, well, we can play all of you, but we're going to have to play this way. And, um, you know, it's going to take a, a great amount of effort on every one of your parts, but you're all going to get to play. And I really think it's helped our team chemistry. I think it's helped our esprit de corps, so to speak. How about that word, Tony? Uh, or words. Um, I just, I, I, I think it's, it, it's been really good. I think they enjoy it. Next question for Coach Huggins. All the way on the right side in the back. Hi, Laura Albanese from Newsday. Um, Brad Underwood coached under you at Kansas. I was wondering what it's like to meet him at this stage, and also is there any sort of advantage to, to being that familiar with his coaching style? Um, probably more an advantage for Brad than it is for me. Because, you know, we were obviously running my stuff. Uh, and Brad runs, does a great job with the, with the pinch post stuff, which I've never, I've never really ran. But I've known Brad for a long, long time. I know Brad when uh, he was at Dodge City Community College and we were recruiting some of his guys. That was a long time ago. That was in the early 90s. So. And then recruited one of his guys at uh, Daytona Beach. So we go way back. Next question's on the left, Justin. Jesse Spector from Sporting News. Coach, you've been at this a long time. How's the tournament changed over the years, and how's your preparation for the tournament changed? Um, probably not as uptight. Um, I was just walking down there. I was thinking of the, the first time that I sat in that meeting, you know, and I was at the University of Akron. And, I'm looking around at all these guys, and I'm like, wow, you know, and you think, and we I, we must have been the last seed in the tournament because we played Michigan, who was the number one ranked team in the country the whole year. And uh, we played really well. I think we lose by six or something like that, but we played really well. And I'm thinking, how do you ever win six games in this deal? And haven't figured that out yet, but we've won four a few times. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it's gotten. I don't know how much it has changed, really. I mean, we were playing in domes back then, and that was. What would that have been? Early '90s, I guess. No, probably in late '80s. Late '80s, we were playing in domes. We're playing in domes now. I don't. I don't know that it's, the meetings are still long, boring. Um, so I don't. I don't know. What all's changed? More commercials, maybe. I'm not sure. Staying on the left side, just in the row behind. Greg Hunter, Metro News. Coach, distractions are part of the NCAA tournament. You have kids from this area who have to worry about tickets. You guys had travel delays yesterday. How do you, how do you guys handle distractions? The travel part we're pretty good at now. Uh, we've had a lot of practice. Um, I mean, I, th I think they... They look forward to to the games, I think. So, you know, we've had one request to, you know, go to his local barber and get a haircut. But other than that, they've kind of stayed pretty close to the, to the group. Continuing with questions for Coach Huggins. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Any more questions for Coach Huggins? There's one in the back. Hugs, have you played a defense that's going to press up on you as much as Stephen F. Austin will be during the course of this season? If so, who would it be similar to? Well, I think when they play their zone, when they play the 1-2-2, two, two, uh, 
Baylor did that for a while, you know, where they really had a lot of ball pressure. Um, and and it, Brad really spreads that 1-2-2 that two, two out, and they get a lot of ball pressure and try to play passing lanes. I would say, you know, Baylor's a 1-1-3, one, one, but I would say from a ball pressure standpoint, I think that's probably the closest that we've played. There's another question on the left side. Coach, you talked before about the need to recruit this area. Uh, uh, be, ha, playing here in a pod here, how much does that help? Recognition, mm. exposure? It's not like it used to be. You know, I mean, it used to, you, you could tell them we were going to come back and play three or four games in a metropolitan area. We are going to play the conference tournament in a metropolitan area. And uh, we were part of a very much an Eastern League. Uh, we've tried to get back in here because there are kids who want to get, you know, go away as well. And we certainly want to try to be involved with them as much as we possibly can. I think it helps, but is, is it, I mean, it's never going to be what it was. Uh, I mean, I, I know you're well aware of this, but our alumni base is very, very strong up and down the East Coast, from from below D.C. up to pretty much up to Boston. And um, I think having uh, having our alumni, that, that strong alumni base in there, we had a lot of people at games and, you know, there's a lot of support. I think kids could see that, you know, the support that West Virginia had up and down the East Coast. We're not playing in here, you know, but maybe a game or two a year is not like playing all the games we used to play in here. Continuing with questions for Coach Huggins, if there are any. Any final question for Coach? All right, Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. The next press conference in the main interview room will be at 4.30 with the Notre Dame Fighting Irish.
Ladies and gentlemen of the media, we're joined now by student athletes from the University of Notre Dame, Demetrius Jackson and Zach August. Their teammates are in the locker room right now, begins now and goes for the next 30 minutes of availability. In 15 minutes, head coach Mike Bray will join us here in the main interview room, and Demetrius and Zach will rejoin their teammates in the locker room. If you have a question for the student athletes from Notre Dame, please raise your hand. Our microphone stewards will make their way in your direction. We're looking for the first one, and it's going to go to Ock in the back off the right side of the aisle. Uh, Jim O'Connell, AP, for both of you. People always talk about how tough it is when you lose a game in a conference tournament like that, but the way you guys lost it, it was so bad. Was that better for you, that we were able to get rid of it quicker than if it had been a, a real tough, close game? Let's go with Demetrius first and then Zach. Yeah, um, it was definitely a tough loss for us. Um, nobody likes to lose. But um, it, was, it was easy for us to put it past us because of you know, how much we lost by and we kind of buried that one quick. But at the same time, we just tried to take away some lessons from the game, um, try to work on some things that we could have done better in that game and, and use that going forward. Definitely, I agree. Um, you know, I think we just use that as motivation um, and kind of use that uh, to push that edge and trying to get our focus back and come out here and play strong. Moving toward the front right with Nicole. Nicole Auerbach, USA Today. For both of you, uh, what do you, how did you guys prepare this week when you weren't going to know your opponent until last night? Did you guys prep for both teams, just focus on your guys' sets and your guys' stuff, or how, how did you do it? And again, we'll start with Demetrius and then Zach. I think um, it, it was good for us to kind of work on our own stuff for a little bit and, and do some things that we can um, kind of do better in the game, so um, taking care of the ball, um, working on our offensive efficiency, things like that. So it gave us some time to uh, work on ourselves. But at the same time, um, just prepping for both teams, long closeouts, because um, we know both teams um, like to shoot the ball, and they shoot it well. Um, so it was kind of similar preparation. Yeah, that's, that's, that's perfect, yeah. That's perfect. perfect. <laughs> Continuing with questions, there's one on the left. Toward the back, Roger. Roger Rubin from Newsday. Uh, did you guys watch the game last night, the Michigan win? Where did you guys watch it? Can you tell us a little bit about what that experience was like? Demetrius first, then Zach. Uh, so we started watching it at uh, Dave & Buster's. So we were at Dave & Buster's playing some games, having fun watching the game, and then uh, we kind of finished it in our hotel room. But yeah, we watched the game, uh, kind of digested it, um, you know, saw a great game, saw two great teams going at it. And so we're just really looking forward to get back out there and playing against another great team. And, um, you know, there's some things we learned from watching the game. Um, we're going to use those going forward and, and continue to work on those things uh, today in practice. Yeah, like Demetri said, you know, we're at dinner watching them play, um, you know, focusing on both teams. You know, we saw that Tulsa like to get up and down a little bit more. Uh, to whereas, you know, Michigan has some great movement. Uh, they like to do double ball screens. They like to move the ball a lot uh, among the guards. So, uh, you know, it's more of a guards play with Michigan. So we, once we saw that, we just focused in and then, you know, worked on our focus on us. Next question's on the right side, Tim. Uh, Tim Bondas on the Washington Post. I was just curious for both of you guys. Um, obviously, you guys don't play in football anymore. Uh, does that give any juice to this game? The fact you guys are playing a, a team that's traditionally a pretty big rival for you guys as a school? Demetrius first, then Zach. Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, we know it's a big rivalry with the two schools. Um, but at the same time, we just want to go out and compete, have fun, um, continue to play with this group. Um, we have a really tight group, and it's just like a family. So um, we're going out playing for each other, playing for you know our university, um, and just giving it all we have. Uh, you know, I know it's great tradition, uh, you know, especially it's fun for the fans to get involved as well with this, uh, you know, tradition of the rivalry. But, uh, you know, at the same time, you know, we're just focused on us and just going out there and playing another game. Continuing with questions for student athletes from Notre Dame. Just to the right of the aisle, Kevin. Uh, what, do, what lessons did you guys take from the Kentucky game last year, obviously, right down to the end? And uh, what did you learn uh, carry over from that to this season? Demetrius first, then Zach, and that's Kevin Armstrong from the New York Daily News. Mm -hmm. um, I think one big lesson is, uh, you know, just playing to win, going for it, um, just going out and playing fearlessly. Um, that's something we try to carry over to this season, just going for it, having fun, competing, um, giving it all we have, 
And I think, you know, we did that really well last year, weren't able to, you know, finish it, but it's a whole new year. And uh, so we just try to use what we learn. We have a lot of guys back who, you know, were in that tournament. So we just try to um, use those things like in our huddles and in our timeouts, we talk about those things as a group. Yeah, you know, something else that I think we learned is obviously, you know, nothing's going to be given to us. Uh, we're going to have to continue to go out there and work, uh, go out there and play, you know, fearless, like Dimitri said, and relentlessly. Um, but, you know, that just comes with the game. You know, we want to go out there and just get another chance to put the jersey back on. Next question is coming on the left side. Paul Gow from PickingSplinters.com. For either of you, uh, a little bit of a struggle early in the year, particularly down in Orlando. What did you do to kind of hit the reset button after that? We'll take both of that. Dimitri is first. You got it. All right. Uh, <laughs> I think, you know, early on in the season, um, you know, we kind of struggled with our identity and kind of reestablishing who we were as a team. Um, you know, we had some, we had a lot of great pieces, a lot of talent, but we just at the time didn't know how to fit them all uh, for 40 minutes consecutively. So I think that's something that we've worked on. I um, mean, you know, now we're very unselfish. You know, we play high uh, efficiency basketball. I think um, one thing we struggle with was finishing. Uh, a lot of the games we were right there and it was uh, tough for us to finish down the line and a lot of times that's what it comes down to like the final four minutes. How can you finish? Um, so I think as the year went on we got more comfortable because um, we were putting in those situations a lot. We got more comfortable with the game situations and, and finishing them. Next question's on the left. Uh, Alex Carson with The Observer. Uh, I guess specifically for Zach, uh, you know, last time Michigan lost to Purdue, Purdue's bigs had a really good game down low, I think like 44 points in the paint. Um, when you see that type of, of performance against a team that you're playing from another team, does that maybe make your eyes light up a little bit going in and knowing that you could have a big game yourself? Uh, yeah, um, definitely. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I kind of stray away from that. Uh, you know, I look at it from a, a more of a team standpoint uh, to a chance that we get to go out there and play, you know, our basketball versus a, a great program uh, under some bright lights. But, um, you know, definitely it's going to be a great battle in the paint, um, and it's going to be a great battle with the guards as well. So uh, just looking at it from that team aspect is, is most important. We have a few more minutes for questions for the student athletes from Notre Dame, if there are any. There's one on the right side. Uh, Steven Brooks, CNHI Media. This one's probably more for you, Zach. You and a lot of guys are on this team. Are, there's a lot of East Coast guys. Um, you know, not necessarily New York, Brooklyn area or anything, but East Coast in general. Um, when you guys find out, found out this was going to be the site, what was the reaction, you know, from within the team, being that you guys do have so many from the whole East Coast, you know, in general? Yeah, um, it was great. It was exciting, you know, for as a team, from a team standpoint, uh, standpoint sorry. Um, you know, we got a chance to come back to uh, New York. You know, we've had uh, a great success here in the past, whether it be at MSG or, uh, you know, coming down here and playing in the biggest tournament. Uh, back in my freshman year, but uh, individually I was excited. Uh, you know, me and a couple guys like Bonzi from the East Coast, you know, we're excited. A couple guys from New York as well. We're happy to come out here, uh, get a chance to play in front of our friends and family. It'll be a quick trip down here, but uh, you know, we're excited to play in this in this great facility and uh, come down here in New York and play. Any further questions for the student athletes from Notre Dame? All right, we'd like to thank Demetrius and Zach for joining us down here in the main interview room. They're going to head back to the locker room, which will be open until. 5 p.m. We'll be joined here in the main interview room by head coach Mike Bray in about five minutes.
We're joined now by Notre Dame head coach Mike Bray. The Notre Dame locker room will be open for the next 18 minutes with student athletes. We have a question already for Coach Bray from Nicole. Nicole Auerbach, USA Today. Mike, how did you handle this week when you see on Selection Sunday that you're playing the winner of a play-in game? Did you guys prep for both teams fully, or how did you do that? Are you a Michigan alum? Just kidding. Good to see you. Um, it was different uh, in that, you know, you don't know who you're playing until late uh, last night. But you know what? It may have been a blessing because you concentrated more on your own team uh, than Tulsa or Michigan. And certainly there's still some things that we can do better, especially taking care of the basketball. We turned it over a bunch in D.C. Um, so it, it probably gave – it probably was a blessing in that I wasn't distracted watching too much Tulsa or Michigan film. I think I watched a half of each on Tuesday, and then that was it, and kind of coached our own team. And, again, you have plenty of time now with a 10 o'clock game to kind of get familiar then with your opponent. The next question is in the back center. Uh, Jim O'Connell, Associated Press. Hey, Mike. Uh, just wondering, is it easier to get a team – back on its regular pace when you had a blowout loss as your last game, or is it tougher if it was a close loss? That's a great question, Ock. Um, you know, it may be a little easier uh, in that, uh, you, you, you know, you, it's one of those burn the tape kind of games at this time of year. Um, the only thing you come back to to dwell on is how we turn the ball over in both games. I mean, I still don't know how we won the Duke game with, I believe, 15 or 16 turnovers. You know, at one time in a, it, it, during the, for most of the season, we led the league, led the nation in least amount of turnovers. And then we hit every cheerleader in the building in the Verizon Center. So, you know, it, 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 was, it gave you one point to stress, but we didn't dwell too much on, on anything else. Next question is in the front on the right side, Tim. Uh, Tim Bondis from the Washington Post. Uh, I know, Mike, obviously this is a big rivalry for the two schools. I know they don't, you guys don't play in football anymore. Um, I, I know probably in the moment for you it's just about focusing on the game, but does this give any extra juice to this week knowing now that you're playing, playing Michigan as opposed to some just any opponent? Oh, no, I think it's exciting for both fan bases. There's no question the Notre Dame-Michigan thing runs deep, and uh, I think it's got both fan bases, and our players feel that. They feel that. So uh, I think it gives a little added energy to it. Um, and we kind of had a week-long buildup, even though Michigan still had to win, and they did a heck of a job winning a close game. They've won a bunch of close games lately. Just a reminder, while joining us in this room, videotaping is not permitted of any kind that includes camera phones for social media purposes or others. Thank you. On the left. Uh, Jesse Spector from Sporting News. I'm just wondering haven't been around the tournament for a long time. How has it changed over the years, and how has your preparation for the tournament changed? Well, you know, they, you know what? They continue to make the tournament better for the student athletes, the little things they do to take care of them. And I remember when, you know, this is a long day, the day before. We're over here, you're doing media, you practice. Guys were starving. You know, they're eating, they, you know, they were getting potato chips out of, out of, out of machines in the hallways. Now we've got catered meals in there and food, and, and I think they've really been sensitive to how can we make it a better experience. Things in the players' rooms, gear, when they get there. Uh, I, I applaud the committee and the NCAA um, for doing that. You know, I, I've been fortunate to be part of it a bunch as an assistant and certainly a head coach. There's nothing like it. It's, um, it, it's, it's awesome to be part of it. Um, our administrative meeting, they started with a little clips from one shining moment. I mean, I get emotional. I start tearing up. You know, I've been doing, you know, it's just fabulous to be part of it. I'm, I'm uh, very grateful. On the left side. Paul Gotham picking splinters. A little struggle early in the year, particularly down in Orlando. What would you do to change? How would you reset everything? You know, I think we, um, we always understood and I try to remind myself that, you know, this year's team would not be an extension of last year's team, even though our fan base and even people evaluating thought we could just pick right up. We lost two pretty good players and two great leaders. I always thought we were a team that would evolve throughout the season, and I kind of reminded our guys that so we didn't, you know, jump off any buildings after tough losses um, or, 
you know, celebrate too much after wins, and, and I think our staff did a good job methodically bringing them along. The area where I was most concerned, the leadership that I lost in Connaughton and Grant, was my biggest worry. I, we still had good basketball players. I figured we'd figure it out, how to score and defend enough and all that. But Jackson, August, and Vastoria have exceeded my expectations as leaders, and that's why we're here. I did not know we would get that from them, and I really emphasize what Demetrius has done and how far he's come since his freshman year. Next question to the right of the aisle, Kevin. Kevin Armstrong, New York Daily News. I know you mentioned the uh, ACC loss was a burn, your, burn the tape uh, type of film. Uh, in terms of last year's uh, game against Kentucky, how did you approach turning the page then, and how do you think that's transitioned uh, you know, I think success. it's made I think it's made this group hungry to be back in this tournament. This nucleus um, was a big part of that run in the NSA tournament and certainly was right there to be so close to a final four berth. Um, I think they come into this thing ready to attack and I certainly don't want to overcoach them and I don't want them playing looking over their shoulders. We need to play downhill. Um, but um, there's a group in that locker room that got accustomed to advancing. And I hope they certainly remember how that feels. All the way to the right, toward the front. Steven Brooks, CNHI Media. Uh, Coach, you guys have a lot of people from the East Coast area in general. I was just wondering what the reaction was from those guys um, when you found out that this was going to be your first destination. Well, I was loving this, – this is great town for us. This is a great Notre Dame town. And really being in the city now for a day, it reminds me of my old Big East days this time of year, you know, we practiced at John Jay yesterday. That's, we always used that gym when we were here for the Big East tournament. Um, so it, there's a little bit of a Big East feel and familiarity for me, but there's no question for our fans and our Subway alums in this town. This is a great Notre Dame town. I just hope they make curfew tonight on St. Patrick's Day, but I doubt that will happen. Next question is toward the front, Nicole. Nicole again. Kind of an offbeat question. Um, just in the coming weeks and coming months, we're going to see the new pre-draft um, process play out. And uh, just your reaction to, to the guys having more feedback and more time to make that decision, and also on the flip side, the roster uncertainty that it creates for coaches. But um, you know, maybe if you're not even going to deal with it this year, but just in general on the new process. I think it's a great decision. You know, I, I applaud the NBA and the NCAA working together on that. Um, I have a young man in Demetrius Jackson that's going to be in that category. Um, I'm not so worried. I don't think as coaches we should be so worried about our rosters. You know, let the young man go and get the proper feedback and get educated to the process uh, and then have time to make an educated decision. I think it was, it's a great yet another step, an example of the NBA and the NCAA working together. Continuing with questions for Coach Bray, there's one in the back on the right side. Mike, when you, when you go back and look at the, the, the new stuff from Michigan, and, and you, I assume you draw parallels to the old stuff from John yeah. at, at West Virginia, what's different? What, what kind of sticks out to you? First of all, I think John's done an unbelievable job, and he's a good friend, you know, given the bodies they've lost this year, to, to you know, have them playing like they're playing. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of familiar, familiarity with the system. You know, we played against them a lot at West Virginia. The open floor, the, uh, the, the reliance on three-point shots, um, you know, we go back, you know, we actually go back into some of those practice plans that we had a while ago when John was at West Virginia and some of the breakdown drills and some of the things we emphasized against his system. So there's, and I'm sh he's got the same familiarity with us too. So uh, we had some great battles in the old Big East. Continuing with questions for Coach Bray, if there are any. There's one on the right side, all the way in the back. I mean, um, the, the whole connection with Beeline, you said you guys are, are good friends. How does that kind of play out? Is that a just summer recruiting, or do you guys uh, have a more deeper relationship than that? You know, I, I think, um, well, we're, we're two guys that really probably worked our way up. I was a high school coach, and, you know, he got started at a lower level and, and, and worked his way up through it. So we probably always have been a little joined at the hip, I think, from coaching in the Big East. The Big East meetings, all the years we spent together, we've recruited against each other a bunch now that he's at Michigan because we look for the same type of player, a skilled guy. We got guys that can make shots, guys that have high basketball IQs. So 
you know, there's a lot of similarities in the offensive philosophies. Uh, so we run into each other a lot. But on, in the, the summer, I get to see him a bunch and always trading stories. A lot of respect for him. He, he's one of the real, real, real good guys and great coaches in the business. Any further questions for Coach Bray? All right, thank you, Coach. Thanks. <laughs> the Notre Dame locker room will be open for another eight or so minutes until 5 p.m. At 5.15 p.m., we'll be joined here by student-athletes from Stephen.
Good evening. We're joined now by student athletes from Stephen F. Austin. We have with us Trey Pinckney, Thomas Walkup, and Demetrius Floyd. Their teammates are in the Stephen F. Austin locker room right now. The locker room is open for the next 30 minutes. In 15 minutes, Coach Brad Underwood will join us here in the main interview room. And until then, we have an opportunity for questions with Demetrius, Trey, and Thomas. First question, please raise your hand. We'll send Ms. Iris over to you with the microphone. Paul Gath and Pick and Splinters get the obvious out of the way. Pressing team plays pressing team. Uh, the old adage is uh, pressing teams don't like to be pressed. How do you think that plays out tomorrow for any one of you? Well, we're going to start with Trey, and we're going to give the opportunity for Thomas to answer as well, and then Demetrius in that order. Well, I, I believe that we handle pressure pretty well. If we go back to the first year that we made to the NCAA tournament, when we played VCU, we did a really good job handling their pressure. So we're kind of giving, uh, going to take the same steps in this game because me and Tom, Thomas was a part of that team. We also have a couple guys that were there as well. So we prepare for it the same way, and we're going to handle the pressure to the best of our abilities. Yeah, we have a ton of guys that are high IQ guys, can pass it, dribble it. Uh, so we're not uh, you know, only relying on Trey to bring the ball up every time. Uh, you know, we can help take some of the pressure off of him, and uh, I think that'll go a long way as far as, uh, you know, valuing the basketball. Yeah, we go through pressure every day during practice or whatever, so I feel like we should be able to handle, handle pressure. Continuing with questions for the student athletes from Stephen F. Austin, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll send the microphone to you. Please remember to state your name and media outlet before your question. Our next one's right in the middle to the right of the aisle. Hi, it's Justin Jackson with the Dominion Post in Morgantown for, uh, for Thomas. Uh, I'm just kind of wondering how much does uh, West Virginia's size advantage come into play for this game tomorrow, and they, what kind of things ca can you guys do to kind of negate what, uh, you know, the size advantage that they might have and, and rebounding and, and things like that? Uh, that is something that we've talked about a lot, uh, but our physicality uh, will have to negate some of that, and uh, really it's attention to detail. Uh, you know, no, no possessions where you miss a, a block out or – uh, you know, everything has to be, be right down to detail so that we, you know, finish out possession strong. And um, I think that's, that's the best way. Continuing with questions for the student athletes from Stephen F. Austin. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Any further questions for the student athletes from Stephen F. Austin? All right. Well, we'd like to thank Demetrius and Thomas and Trey for joining us. They're going to return to the locker room right now, which is – uh, still open, and they'll join their teammates for some more questions and answers in the locker room. Thanks, guys. Good luck. See you tomorrow. The Stephen F. Austin locker room is open until 5.45 p.m., and we'll be joined momentarily by Stephen F. Austin head coach Brad Underwood.
I was saying we don't want to rush the coach out of the locker room because he's doing his ENG, you know, television interviews with the cameras rolling and his Snapchatting and Vine videos and Twitter videos and stuff like that, you know. A lot of people are covering the tournament that way. They just can't do it in this room. They have to do it in the other room, which we love. We understand that. We love that. It's correct. Just not here. Don't be shy in shouting out that score. <laughs> We're joined now by Stephen F. Austin head coach Brad Underwood. We'll ask Coach Underwood to make an opening statement, then he'll take your questions. Well, we're very excited about the opportunity to, uh, to be here again. Uh, it's our third year in a row, and I'm, I'm extremely happy for the five seniors uh, that were uh, on this year's team. Uh, for them, uh, they've set a great, great foundation for our program, a culture of work, and, and uh, uh, to be able to finish the year as conference champions and go 18-0, uh, gut it up for two games. You talk about pressure, uh, is, is knowing you have to win, your, win two more to come to the tournament, but uh, I couldn't be happier, and, and uh, uh, for that group, is, um, uh, they're very deserving. Uh, it's a uh, it's a great challenge playing a very good friend uh, who has a uh, uh, tremendous basketball team finishing second in the Big 12 and uh, arguably the best conference in, in, in basketball. So uh, I have tremendous respect for Bob and 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 Hugs and, and and the job that he and his staff have done. Uh, they play very very hard and and we're going to have to match that effort tomorrow. Coach Underwood's student athletes are in the Stephen F. Austin locker room right now for the next 15 minutes to take your questions. Coach is joining us here, and the first question for him belongs to Larry on the right side. Larry Fleischer, Associate Press. You mentioned Coach Huggins. In the one year you spent working with him in 06, 07 at Kansas State, what are some of the things that you uh, picked up from him? Well, there's, there's two things that, that Huggs did that were unbelievably impressive to me. And, and one is, as, as a head coach, I've never been around or had seen anyone who spent as much time uh, recruiting as he did as a head coach. Uh, fabulous, fabulous uh, uh, recruiter and spent tremendous time. Uh, the other thing is he's the single best communicator with people and, and players that I've ever seen. Uh, just had an unbelievable way of, of uh, affecting young men in a positive way and uh, can get on them and, and get the best out of them on the basketball court. And then uh, uh, just so caring and so involved uh, in their everyday life. And, and you know, it's, it's a reason he's been successful and is a Hall of Fame coach and, you know, approaching 800 wins. And uh, his players love him to death. And, and, and it, was, it was a great learning experience for me. We're going to stay in the, on the right side in the front. Mitch? Mitch Bingle from the Charleston Gazette Mail. Coach, I just wonder, you've got to tell us your best Huggins story. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, I could get in a lot of trouble with this. Um, now, I, you know, I, I don't know if I want to get into a whole lot of that. I, there's so many. There's one thing about hugs that, that, that people don't realize because they, they see the, 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 the intense, the passion, and yet he's a guy that is probably as easy to work for as anybody out there, and literally laughter is a part of his everyday life. I just photobombed one of his interviews over here and jumped in it just because I knew he'd do it to me. And, and it's, it's something that uh, uh, he's funny, he's, he's so magnetic. You know, and, and I'm gonna say this on a serious note, uh, he's got such a magnetic personality. When he left Kansas State to go to West Virginia, uh, he impacted so many people's lives, and, and one of those was my wife. And, and, you know, I look over and she's crying when he's getting on the plane to, to, to head out. And, you know, it's, there's very few people who can do that. That's probably not a, a story that's funny, but it's, 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 it's so meaningful because it's who he is as a person. And, um, you know, I think he's, uh, he's impacted a lot of people's lives, not just as players. Next question is on the right side of the aisle. Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Brad, um, I guess two parts. Um, we, West Virginia has its reputation for its up-tempo or its uh, pressure defense. Your team uh, pressures a lot. I guess for people who maybe haven't seen as much as your team, what's the difference between the pressures? Um, and the other part of that, in a game like this, as a coach, you, as much as you want to value the basketball, do you have to sort of accept that there are going to be some turnovers here? I hope there's not, and I hope there is. Um, no, I, we're different in this way. Uh, press Virginia, they're, they're unbelievable in the full court. And it's not the way they press. It's the effort with which they do it with. And, and it's unrelenting for 40 minutes. They play, with, they play so hard. A lot of people press, but they don't, it doesn't work. Uh, I like to think that um, we pick up full court some, we mix up our defenses uh, in the full court, but ours is more half court oriented, uh, taking passing lanes away, uh, denial. Uh, we have a, a young man in Trey Pinkney at the point who's, uh, who's as good on the ball defender as I've been around in, in, in my time as a coach. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a culmination of, of we don't want anybody to have any one possession easy, whether it's a baseline out, whether it's a side out. Uh, there's total pressure um, on the offense the entire time. And, and uh, over the course of 40 minutes, we've been able to force turnovers because of the little things, loose balls, taking charges, uh, diving on the floor. All those things are things that we take a great deal of pride in and, and we have to do tomorrow and win those battles if we're going to be successful. Next question's on the right side. Coach uh, Dan Wolfgang with the Mountaineer Sports Network. First off, final score, Yale won 79-75. Um, wanted to get your thoughts on stopping Devin Williams. He had 31 against Kansas in his last game, and it seems that that'll be a big focus for your team defensively in the half court. Well, I don't know if you stop him. I, I think the one thing that, that he does an unbelievable job is he plays two contacts. So he gets to the foul line a great deal. Uh, and then when you've got a team that has, uh, is number one in the country in offensive rebound percentage in terms of getting the ball back, that's a great start. Try to keep him off the foul line, uh, try to make his touches hard, and then block him out. Uh, now, a lot of people have tried that, and, it, it, and it's, it's a credit to Devin because uh, he's, he's been successful in, uh, in, in most every game out there. So, he's a very good player. We're going to have to work. We're going to throw a lot of bodies at him. We're not going to do it with one person. Uh, sometimes the best post defense is good perimeter defense. And uh, so we've got to make, uh, you know, make ourselves active and, and, uh, uh, and, then, and then just try to uh, uh, limit his touches the best we can and, and then make sure we get a, block, get, get a solid block out on him. Continuing with questions for Coach Underwood. Any further questions for Coach? Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow night. Hey, tomorrow day. I'll see you tomorrow. 7 o'clock. See you tomorrow night. The Stephen F. Austin locker room remains open until 5.45. That's another eight or nine minutes. 
at 6 p.m. by student athletes from the University of Michigan, followed by head coach John Beeline.
Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, we'll be joined by student athletes from the University of Michigan. <clears throat> Joining us this afternoon in the main interview area is Zach Irvin, Duncan Robinson, and Mo Wagner. The remaining Michigan athletes will be in the Michigan locker room waiting for your questions there. In 15 minutes, we'll be joined by the head coach of the Wolverines, John Beeline. The Michigan locker room and the student athletes will be available until 6.30 p.m. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Brooklyn, New York, Barclays Center. As our news conferences advance, tomorrow's NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship first round here in Brooklyn. We're joined now by the victors. Last night, traveled uh, overnight to be with us here in New York. Uh, we're joined right now by Zach Irvin, Duncan Robinson, and Mo Wagner. Their teammates are available in the Michigan locker room right now for the next 30 minutes. We'll be joined by their coach, John Beeline, in 15 minutes. 
But right now, we have the first question for our student athletes from Michigan, and it goes to Jim O'Connell, Associated Press. Uh, I was just wondering, could you guys, how was the trip getting from Dayton to here, and what time did you get in, and what did you, what'd you have a chance to do today? I mean, was it just sleeping and catching up? Zach, tell us a little bit about that first, and then we'll get a word from Duncan and Mo. Yeah, after the game, um, able to shower up. I think we got to the airport around 1230. I think we got in Brooklyn in our hotel room, I think around 4. So it was definitely a long trip for us. Um, got a lot of sleep this morning, which was nice. Got to catch up on some rest, just trying to fight fatigue. Duncan, what was the experience like for you? Uh, yeah, Zach kind of said it. Um, but no, nah, we, uh, we got some sleep this morning, which was good. Uh, now we're ready to go today, so we're looking forward to it. And Mo, what did you think of the whole thing? Um, yeah, obviously a very exciting trip. Um, really nothing special to add. Next question for the Wolverine student athletes. If you have a question, just raise your hand. We have our microphone attendants out there. They'll bring the microphone to you. We're going to move to Tim over to the right. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, Tim Bondus from the Washington Post. Um, obviously, there's a big rivalry playing Notre Dame. Um, you know, you guys have a long history uh, in programs. You don't play in football anymore, which I know is a big deal. But um, obviously, I know you guys are happy to be here after winning last night. But is there any added juice to getting a chance to play a team like Notre Dame uh, on this kind of stage? And we're going to start with Zach again on that question. Yeah, I think uh, it'll be a good game for us. Uh, definitely happy that we got we were able to get the win last night. But I just think we play every game with a chip on our shoulder. Um, I'm just, I know we're getting ready for the game. I'm just, we're just excited for it. Duncan, anything to add? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously winning last night was good, but, you know, we have a next game mentality. You know, we're really excited for this opportunity. And like Zach said, always try to play with a chip on our shoulder. Mo, any final thought on that? Um, yeah, as both said already, um, very grateful to be in that position, um, to have that huge challenge in front of us. and. Very excited to play a great game tomorrow. Next question for the Wolverines student athletes. If you have a question, raise your hand. There's one in the back. Roger. Roger Rubin from Newsday. Uh, for Zach and Duncan, in terms of turning things around in a very short period of time, I mean, you you've only you have the same amount of time that your opponent does to get ready, but it's a short amount of time and less, less time than most of the teams that are in the tournament. How do you feel about dealing with that shortened timeline? Zach first, then Duncan. Yeah, we do have a quick turnaround. Um, I think it kind of helped us though with the Big Ten tournament, how we played three games in a row that kind of got us ready for the NCAA tournament. Um, Tulsa was a great team. You know, it was a hard fall game we were able to win. And obviously Notre Dame is really good as well, so it is going to be tough for us to learn everything that they do. But I mean, at this time, you know, it's more about the players and their plays. Duncan. Yeah, you know, playing in that that first four game and then now in this round of 64 is a unique challenge for sure. But like Zach said, you know, we've had those short turnarounds before. Um, you know, we played down in the Bahamas on on a short turnaround. And then, like he said, um, just recently in Indianapolis. So we're ready for it. I just got to stay locked in uh, today and and tomorrow leading up until the game. Continuing with questions, Roger has a possible follow-up. Coach Beeline and Coach Bray spent a lot of time going against one another as Big East coaches. Have you, in the one day of preparation that you've had, does it show that he is very familiar with what Notre Dame likes to do? Zach, let's have you take that first. Yeah, with uh, both of them being the Big East, I think uh, Coach B kind of uh, remembers some of the things that Notre Dame does. But, I mean, that, that was quite some time ago. Um, we're just doing as much as we can, just learn about them in this short turnaround. Duncan, anything to add? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, like Zach said, there's definitely some uh, history there. But at the same time, we're also just very focused on ourselves, um, just trying to improve our own game plan. Um, and obviously, we need, to, we need to stop them, but also how we can be effective on both ends of the floor. And Mo, a final thought on that, if you have one? Uh, yeah, I, I think there isn't really a different mindset going into that game. Um, just going out there and compete and give them, giving um, all you have to win the game. Continuing with questions for the Wolverine student-athletes, if there are any. 
Any final questions for the student athletes from Michigan? All right, then we'd like to thank Zach and Duncan and Mo for joining us. They're going to rejoin their teammates in the Michigan Wol Wolverine uh, locker room, which is open until 630. We'll be joined by Michigan head coach John Beeline in just a few minutes.
Ladies and gentlemen of the media, for our final news conference of the day here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, we're joined now by head coach of the Michigan Wolverines, John Beeline. Coach Beeline, we'll ask you to give an opening statement and then take some questions. We're really pleased to be in this situation. Uh, not even uh, 12 hours ago or so, or 24 hours ago, we were getting ready to play a game not knowing whether we'd be going back to Ann Arbor or uh, making this trip to Brooklyn. So I uh, got in at 4 a.m. this morning. Uh, and uh, got some rest. I had the latest wake-up wake call ever at noon for our players and just ate and walked through a few things and uh, for, uh, that Notre Dame does. Look forward to getting a little shoot around and getting the kids sweat a little bit today and uh, uh, get prepared for Notre Dame. We're looking for the first question for Coach Beeline. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll send a microphone in your direction. We have one in the back to the left of the aisle for Roger. Roger Rubin from Newsday. It's a short amount of time for you to turn around and prepare your team. Does it help at all that you spent a bunch of time coaching in the Big East against Mike Bray's teams? Yeah, I guess it, uh, it, it helps him as well, that we know each other uh, pretty well, got a lot of respect for Mike. Uh, yeah, I, I know a little bit when, when I watched them play uh, see a lot of similarities the way they played, but it was nine years ago when we did play. So it's a, a, a I think they, they have a, we recruited many of their players, they recruited many of ours. It's a, uh, there's a lot of similarities between the programs. So it's uh, in a short t prep, whether it was one or two days, uh, you just got to go play this time of year. Continuing with questions for Coach Beeline, just raise your hand if you have a question. There's one on the right. Jesse Spector from Sporting News. Coach, you've been at this a long time. Uh, just wondering, how has the tournament changed over the years, and how has your preparation for the tournament changed over the years? Um, this has certainly been unique, being in the first four and now moving forward. That was something brand new. But, um, you know, I don't see a lot of differences right now. I think that you're still going to have, as you saw with Yale and Baylor today, you're going to have great games where – People that thought Baylor was going to beat Yale never watched Yale play. They don't know how good they are. Now, all us coaches see that. Uh, Chad gave Duke a great run. Well, that was still happening back when I was at Richmond and, and we upset South Carolina or Valpo beat Mississippi that day on a miracle shot. It's just we, we continue to have challenges in college athletics, but the end product is still very high quality as we continue to adapt. So the tournament is as good as ever and thrilled to be in it again. Next question for Coach Beeline. Just raise your hand. Right in the center. So Lev Fasher, Michigan Daily. Uh, obviously a lot of history between Michigan and Notre Dame. Not, not so much in the basketball arena, though. Does that rivalry aspect, especially you know, given the, the football hiatus and the, the 10 years it's been since you played Notre Dame, cross your mind at all? No, I, I think our guys, we have a lot of respect. I know I have a lot of respect for Notre Dame and the institution itself and the, the, the athletic teams that they have. So, uh, you know, football has been a great rivalry for years. Maybe it will be again. Uh, but this is, I, I think, if, if Mike and, uh, and, and I, if we didn't have some of the schedules that were so fixed right now, it would be a great game in basketball as well. And it probably will be in the ACC Big Ten Challenge at some point. So it's two great schools, and, uh, you know, our, our young men, they, you know, they have a lot of Midwest kids. We have a lot of Midwest kids. They've all played against each other. I think those rivalries are, are probably were formed way before anybody thought it would be a Notre Dame-Michigan game. They might have been in eighth grade they played against each other. So it's a, it's a great basketball game, and uh, I know that uh, there will be a lot of people tuned in. If you have a question for Coach Beeline, please raise your hand. Any further questions? Yeah, there's one on the right. How you doing? Jamal Murphy, Bill Roden on Sports. I was more of a general question. Uh, one of the big themes recently in college basketball is, are the graduate uh, senior transfers, yeah. kind of like almost like a free agent yeah. type of deal. I was wondering your thoughts on that. Do you think it's good for the game, bad for the game? Yeah, I think we're in a dangerous area there where you have the uh, the graduate transfer and then where he can go afterwards and things like that, like we actually have one in our league. Uh, that, those are difficult things, I think, that we got to look at in the future and, 
and what is the real purpose of that? Uh, is, it, is that young man going there just to play basketball? Is he going there to get his master's degree? How many are getting their master's degrees? I mean, there, there's got to be some legit, legitimacy to that rather than just another year of eligibility. And uh, so uh, uh, the mid-majors that are getting, to having their best players taken from them. You remember, a guy read, there's a reason a guy has a fifth year, that somewhere during that year he was injured, he had doctors, he had trainers, he had people looking after him at his home school, and now he's going to take everything they did to another school, right? That's not necessarily fair to anybody, all right? So, it, or fair to the home school that did all that work. Uh, the coaches that work with them. So I think that it's, it, we got to be very careful in this area. I trust the NCAA is looking at it closely, and hopefully uh, we'll continue to make the right strides to make it a, a, a situation that really uh, it fits everyone much better. We have a few more minutes for questions for Coach Beeline, if there are any. Any final question for Coach? All right, thank you very much, All right, Coach. Thank you. The Michigan locker room is open for 10 more minutes until 6.30. Things up in the main interview room for the day. Eight big press conferences up, eight big press conferences down. We will see you back here tomorrow for the post-game news conference featuring the participants in our first game of the day. That is the 12.40 tip. Thanks.